seven, a couple weeks ago, 800 deep. 800 deep. And ain't nobody died. Amen. I brag on it. I don't care. I say it every week. I don't care what you think. Amen. So we're going to talk about, amen. Did the message last week help you? Sometimes you just need a good old reminder. Amen. Amen. But this week we're going to be talking about yield. Look at somebody and say yield. Yield. Romans 6 and 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. So we know not to yield. Y'all know what yield means, right? It means give in to. Right? You know what a yield sign is, right? Those of you that drive, I hope you, it was on your test. People don't know, not in Texas. They think it means stop. They think yield means stop and they make me so mad. When I'm behind them. Then when I'm in front of them, they think it means you don't have to stop. I didn't stop. I was yielding. People crazy. You know how my, and God was telling me the other day. I was riding in the car the other day and I was just looking and I was looking at faces. I never do that, but I'm just looking at faces in cars or whatever. And one out of every three cars, somebody looking crazy. And I was just thinking, and the Lord spoke to me. Elder, and he said, do you know how much I protect you? Yeah. And I said, what you say, Lord? He said, how much I protect you? At any moment, you going 70, 80 miles, at any moment, somebody could have forgot their medication, be mad at somebody, have a loaded gun looking for somebody. Somebody could be ready to take their own life. At any second, they could flip their car right into yours. And God said, I'm protecting you. I couldn't do nothing but thank him, Elder. Amen. And in my car, I could throw my hands up and thank him for a little while. And the car said, go on and praise him. I got this. Amen. I ain't trying to floss. I'm sorry. Did I floss? I wasn't trying to. But, you know, that's just kind of how. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, for some folk just can't handle nothing. Look at him. You think he think. You think that. <laughs> but we have no idea how much God protects us. Just day to day. Your kids, in, if they're in school, on your job, somebody could just be crazy. And do you know there are angels at work to keep people from doing the fool on you? That's the only reason you're here. The only reason you are here. Man, that's a blessing to my soul. Yes. Neither yield ye your members as, righteous, un, as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The reason I'm reading this is because something has crept into the church and it stinks. And it's the doctrine of living any way you want to and claiming salvation. Right yeah, but salvation isn't based on works. It's based on faith. And faith without works is what? So how strong is your faith if you have no works? Well, I don't have to earn my way. Nobody said earn your way. But you should want to act right. You should want to do right. Amen. So this doctrine has crept into the church and confused a lot of people. So I want to help you with this today. Look at somebody and say yield. Because that's all it's about. Yield it. He tells you now. Don't yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness. If the Bible is saying that, it's saying it for a reason. So how do you get the Bible 
trouble and change it. Well, it's okay, though, because Jesus died for my sin, yeah. so it's okay for me to yield my members of, uh, to unrighteousness and unto sin. No, that's not true. It's never okay. You know why it's not okay? Because God said don't do it. He just said it. Now, why did he say don't do it? Because you can't sin without affecting someone else. It would be different if you could sin and it would affect no one else. But every time you sin, someone else is affected. Can I preach in here? Other than you, yeah, you definitely affected. But I'm saying you end up breaking the commandment of of uh, uh, hurting your brother yeah. or not loving your brother, yeah. not loving the brethren when you sin. Yeah. Somebody, but I'm by myself, don't nobody know me, so when I do what I do, yeah, but they're looking for you. Yeah. You done broke their heart because they can't find you. Because you're slipping and sliding and ducking and dodging. You're going to hurt somebody with your sin. You can't sin and not hurt someone. I'm preaching here. So, don't yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments, meaning your members, your body. Don't use your body uh, 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 for the dead, but use your body for righteousness unto God. Yeah. Amen? That's why I told you, when we're doing the praise and worship, your body's an instrument. Uh-oh. Yeah. You have a voice just like Kuman's horn up there. Close. Same volume. But yeah, you, so that's why we sing. That's why we lift our hands because they're instruments unto God. We're giving him worship with our instruments. Because he deserves it. Amen. And it's so funny. The same folk that be out there wilding and sin and come in church and you don't want to even lift your hands. But when you was in the club, you was stuck to the wall like you was Velcro. <laughs> Jumping on folks' backs. You was a straight monkey when the lights went off. Yeah! Planet Rock came on and you pop locked till stuff started getting loose on your body. Oh, don't play Planet Rock. Oh, they play my jam. And then come to church. Do you know? See, I'm talking about God protecting me while I'm just, just randomly driving, Jay Bryan. But if you survived going to a club, you are walking miracle. You a miracle because every demon in hell was in there trying to kill you. Every devil in hell came up when they found out you was going. I know I'm preaching in here. Is it the truth? Amen. Struggling with sin is struggling with yielding. Please hear me. When a person continues in sin, after coming to the knowledge of the truth, they are unyielded. Romans 6 and 16 will tell you. Know ye not that to whom ye what? Yield yourselves servants to obey. His servants ye are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So if you're doing the wrong thing, you have yielded to wrong. That's what the Bible just said. Amen. There is a difference between falling into sin and living in sin. Let me preach in here. Some of y'all came up the rough side of the mountain. Stuff happened to you when you was young. All kinds of stuff. That stuff started manifesting in your life later on in life. After you accepted Jesus Christ. Oh, see, that's okay. That's okay. We need seats. Somebody don't agree? We need seats. If you don't agree with that. You, you've been perfect since you've been saved? 
No, sometimes things happen. You get off. Amen. The devil will go kick some old issue and you wasn't ready for it. Amen. And it was boots and an overcoat in the alley and the church folk had to come get you. Come on, bro. Button the coat up. You're going to walk with me. You got to button the coat up. Yeah, you were just out because the devil came and did something. And I, I said it this morning online. I, I made a little uh, a video clip talking about the, how the devil can't change you. He can't change you. All he can do is manipulate something that's already inside of you. And he knows it's inside of you by listening to you and watching you. He can't read your mind. He can't read your heart. Devil's not that powerful. He's not God. So he's just listening. And then he's watching you. And a lot of times he's just watching your friends. Because he picked them. He picked them. He put them there. Because he knew they would get you off. Yeah. And so a lot of times we come to church. Most of y'all in here. You come to church to get that issue handled. Amen. Because I, I, I just refuse to live in sin. There's a difference. Can I preach in here? There's a difference in a struggle. Or falling into sin and then living in sin. Many times we fall into things that we should not and find ourselves in a place we should not be. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. I've never done that. You were just thinking about killing one of the sisters in the church last week. See, for some reason, those ain't bad sins to people. But it was in my head. No, the Bible said it was in your head. It's in your heart. And if it's in your heart, you already did it. You got to repent for murdering somebody because you killed them in your heart. You got to repent for adultery because you slept with them in your mind. The Bible said if it's in your head, you've already committed it. Oh, look at the hand. Can I keep preaching in here? I feel like I'm telling the truth. But many times we fall into things that we should not find ourselves in a place we should not be. This is where the truth of the word comes in to rescue us. Now, if you're strong enough, you can sit in here, hear the message, and then make a change. Yeah. If you're weak, then you try to change the message. And because this message can't be changed, you got to leave. Because look at somebody say, this message is not changing. Yeah. So this is where the truth of the word comes to rescue us. How many of you have ever been rescued by the word? Yeah. First John 5 and 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. But he who is born of God protects him. And the evil one, what? does not touch it. So if you're born of God, you don't keep on sinning. Amen. Can I preach in here? Yeah, so you can't try to change the Bible. Well, it's covered under the grace so I can go do whatever I want. You can't do that. Question is not even whether or not you can do it. The question is, why? Means you're not yielded. But when we have adopted sin as a lifestyle, we are practicing defiance, which makes us unyielding to the word and the very power that can make us free. So if you don't yield to the power that can make you free, you're not free indeed. If you're not free, you're bound. Bound to what? Sin. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Free from what? Sin. So the opposite of free is bound. 
So if you're not free, you're bound. Bound to what? Sin. First John 3 and 6, no one who abides in him keeps on sinning. If you abide in him, you won't keep on sinning. Ain't no way in the world you're talking to the Lord and have a good relationship with him and you keep on sinning. Somehow there's a disconnect somewhere you got disconnected and sometimes we get disconnected. Can I be honest enough and say that? Yeah, yeah sometimes your phone got cut off. <laughs> Amen. Lord trying to call you and the Lord get doo -doo -doo. We're sorry. You have reached the number that has been disconnected. This dude is in the alley. He can't answer you, Lord. He can't answer. He's at the pool shack. Again. The domino table. <laughs> yeah. Disconnected. We're human. Sometimes somebody make you so mad you just backslide. Look, don't nobody gonna agree with that. You been that bad before. You don't, amen. You ain't always been full of the Holy Ghost and mad at somebody. Amen. Especially folks that know which buttons to push. Folks that know certain buttons, they know the bypass button. This gonna bypass the Holy Ghost. This button. The blue button bypasses the Holy Ghost. I'm going to get some cussing if I push this button. Amen. Whole vo all the vocal cords bypass the frontal lobe and the brain. Then they on autopilot. Ignorant pilot. Telling you how they really feel. Amen. And then you have to come to church and repent. Amen. Amen. You couldn't repent on your own. It was too bad. You had to come to church. Let the saints help you repent. <laughs> am I telling the truth? See, am I the only, y'all gonna leave me out here like that? Yeah. Yeah. God has to get you right in some areas. Because we're human and we've been through stuff. Romans 6 and 14, for sin shall not have dominion over you. Amen. Now, a person that is siding for sin, sin has dominion over them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. They're siding for sin after salvation, then sin has dominion. What I mean by siding, meaning that they want to find a loophole in the system so that they can live a lifestyle against God. But still claim him. That's somebody who sin has dominion over. Him. When sin doesn't have dominion over him, over you, you want it to stop. Hey, that's okay. Yeah, you don't want to keep doing it when it doesn't have dominion. When it has dominion over you, you want to keep doing it. Because it won. That's what dominion means. For ye are not under the law, but under what? Grace. grace. You're not under the law, but under what? Grace. grace. So grace is here because none of us can pay the penalty of the law. Right. Under the law, sin had dominion over us. Because it was about works in our flesh. But because of grace, it no longer has dominion over us. But we don't join with sin. Because of that. I wish somebody was. That's okay. I want y'all to know what we believe in here. Amen. Sin can never have dominion over a believer. When we are born again. We are born into the spirit of God. Which brings grace for our shortcomings. And victory over sin. So it don't just bring grace for shortcoming. But it will give you victories over sin. Yeah. Have you ever had victories over sin? Where those sins are gone forever? Those are victories over sin. It's no effort for those. They're gone. They're defeated. That's victory. 
Amen. Now, if you give in to it, it has victory over you. And you didn't win. Romans 6 and 12. Let not sin, therefore what? Reign in your mortal bodies. Reign. A boxer, that's the reigning champ. That means he's the champ. And he whooped everybody that needed to be whipped to become the champ. Yeah. Right? That means he's at the top. Yeah. He's reigning. Right? Yeah. Well, that's what sin does. The Bible says don't let sin reign in your bodies like that. If you, look, if you keep one sin, it's going to lead to more. Yeah. 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 Because sin is an open door. So you got to open the door to let sin in. And when you open the door, the door is open. When the door is open, you don't have control over what comes in. You don't have control over sin because sin is Satan. And you have no control over him. Did you know that? Hey, you can't tell him which sins uh, <laughs> that's okay for you and which ones are not. When the door is open, all of them coming in there. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. If he's driving, he's taking you to hell. Yeah. He ain't going to just take you to the liquor store <laughs> and get you full for one night. He ain't going to just take you to the motel. All right. No. He's not dropping you off nowhere. <laughs> the Bible. The old song used to say, don't let the devil ride. Don't even let him ride. Don't let him ride. Y'all remember that song? Young folks looking at what in the world? Yeah, that was really a song. Don't let the devil ride. Because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. So don't let the devil ride. Y'all don't know. Them was the hits. Those was old hits. No, that song was horrible. But it had a good message. Don't let him ride because he'll want to drive. Amen. So you don't, you don't partner with the devil for certain sins. I gave everything up though, Pastor, for the Lord I'm living for. I gave everything up. Except my weed. <laughs> Talking about an open door. Do you know what weed is? The reason they're legalizing it. They're not legalizing it for the enjoyment of the American public. They're legalizing it because it's the greatest open door. Yeah. It disables the guardian of your soul. Yeah. Which is your mind. It disables your guardian compromises your protection yeah. right so you'll start doing the things you would have never done yeah. that's what weed does yeah. yes, sir. Amen. Amen. yeah so you left the worst thing you should have kept the dice and gave the weed up you could have used the dice on some other game Yahtzee. <laughs> Yahtzee. You need about 18 dice for Yahtzee. What is Yahtzee? Anybody know how to play that? I just see a whole bunch of dice and I said, oh, the Lord said, no! <laughs> but don't let sin reign or have control in your mortal body that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. That's pretty simple, isn't it? God's grace covers us and keeps us from falling. God's grace covers us and keeps us from falling. It'll first start covering you. Then it'll start keeping you from falling. So the stuff it used to have to cover you from, it don't have to cover you no more because you're done with that. You recognize it? No, I'm not falling into that again. That's the old me. That's the old man. I used to do that. I don't do that no more. The devil used to catch me slipping in that area. I don't slip no more. 
cut C. Amen. So his grace covers us. But in cases where we do fall short, Jesus intercedes and advocates for us. Yeah. You know what an advocate is? That means he's for you. He's for you. Mm. Jesus is not trying to put you in hell. And he's not rejoicing when you fall. He's advocating for you. He's pleading your case to God. Dr. Carter says something that is, is true, but the way he said it is him. <laughs> but he said... Uh, God's reputation was so bad that Jesus had to come to clean it up. And that's the truth. Old Testament God. You out of there. You're just out of there. I was reading the other day and I was reading about David and I understand. I mean, this is a man of God's own... David's like one of God's favorite people. And David did just the simplest thing. He just numbered them. Remember that? Just simply numbering. And God got so mad. <laughs> I mean, he was so mad. So the word of the Lord came to David and God was like, a whole bunch of people gonna die. And David like, I mean... <laughs> I was like, no. Either they gonna die or they gonna die. Pick one. <laughs> and somebody like, oh, but, but I, God made everything. He can do whatever he want to do. I mean, he made everything. I can't stand people. Oh, God wouldn't do that. You wouldn't do that. But you're not God. Thank God you're not. But Jesus came, he's your advocate. He's like, God, don't kill him all this time. <laughs> hey, see, y'all, hey, that's, that's what I was looking for. Don't kill him, Lord. I know his little freckle face said he wasn't going to do that again. But don't kill him, Lord. I'm like, thank you, hey! Lord, help Jesus! He's your advocate. Amen. But ain't nobody taking advantage of him. And amen. Now, well, we all are taking advantage of him. <laughs> Let me back that up and rephrase that. You're not going to purposely be trying to do that. You see what I'm saying? You don't want to purposely live like that. You don't want to be a homosexual and walk around gay all the time thinking that, well, tell him about me, Jesus. He, yeah, you remember what you said? And what? Why would Jesus advocate for that? When sin has dominion over you. You've already chosen a master. And Jesus is not your master. Sin is your master. So why would Jesus. Can I tell the truth in here? Yeah. First John 2 and 1. My little children. These things write I unto you that you do what? So Jesus said sin not and if any man sin we have John said this, and if any man sin we have an advocate with the father Jesus Christ the righteous so in the cases where you do sin Jesus is there to advocate for you for your forgiveness he's going to negotiate your forgiveness with God ain't that something it's like your attorney he's going to negotiate Now, the one thing he's not going to negotiate is your consequences. That's not a part of the discussion. Forgive him, Lord. I'm forgiven. Yes, he's in prison, but he's forgiven. Amen. Oh, see that. Yeah. You're going to deal with the consequences. That's why he doesn't want you to see it. He don't want you to deal with the consequences. 
Sometimes your sin didn't affect people as bad as the consequences will. I just preached. That was good right there. I need somebody to listen to me, boy. You should see I'm getting some mean mugging today. Amen. Somebody got some weed in their wallet. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what part of not legal in Texas don't you understand? And then when they get arrested, oh, the, Julian, Julian, you think you get on phone with the elders? <laughs> Brother, no! He preached that! <laughs> Julian! Just no, he's deacon. You can call him Julian! Like a movie part. <laughs> Julian! <laughs> Brother, just because you saying it loud don't mean we coming to get you. <laughs> I don't care how you say it. I stopped getting folks out of jail. We don't do that. I, I tried it. Couple people I got out of jail, they left the church and they talking about me. So I won't do that any, again. I'm leaving your butt in there. You don't talk about me, talk about me from in there. Without internet access. <laughs> Can't make no page in that. Give me my money. I'm never glad I'm saved. Just dumb. <laughs> yes, sir. Baby. <laughs> Let me move on. <laughs> I, need the, I need the advocate in a minute. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Let me. <laughs> the law punishes. The law punishes, but grace does what? Justifies. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from sin and makes us new each and every time we repent. Amen. So don't look. Wherever you came from, whatever you came out of, don't think that God's grace can't handle. He'll forgive you for it. But he definitely wants you to do better. Amen. For your own sake. For the lives of your family. For everybody's sake, he wants you better. He wants you to be a witness so you can rescue somebody else. Amen. Let me move on. Good gracious. Galatians 2 and 16. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law. I just destroyed a whole group of folks that be marching around churches. Why they marching around churches? They come and just stand out in front of the church with a microphone and want to be heard to teach us in here against Galatians 2 and 16. They, came, they come to tell you something is wrong with this scripture. Yeah. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of who? Jesus Christ. That's shut down. That ends it all, don't it? It should, but you know, when you argue with somebody that's out of their mind, you can't shut them down. But it should be that simple. We're not justified by works of the law. Yeah. Oh, brother, are you a law keeper? I keep Jesus' laws. Yeah. I see him. <laughs> I'm not talking about Jesus. No, you're not talking about God. You're not talking about a part of the Godhead. Yeah. <laughs> see, Moses. <laughs> Moses. You mean the one that couldn't even go into the promised land? Because he disobeyed? <laughs> but see, it ain't about Moses. His laws. He had the laws directly from God. Who Jesus is in, right? Right. right. <laughs> see, <laughs> you just, I see what you're trying to do. Why do they always see what I'm trying to do? You saw what I was trying to do when you saw me online preaching. Amen. 
And they, <laughs> well, let me, let me move on. <laughs> Even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ. Oh, okay. So basically y'all not justified because y'all don't believe in Jesus Christ. So yeah, you got to keep the law. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. You go keep the law, brother, but don't come try to make us keep it because we believe in Jesus Christ. So are you saying you just throwing away the whole law? Brother, I'm adjusting, I'm, I'm addressing the whole law with one commandment. To love your crazy tail as myself. Uh, don't clap at that. Lord, forgive me for phrasing it that way. But yeah, to love my neighbor as myself, that's what the Bible said. That encompasses the whole law. But brother, you, you got to quit having church on Sunday because that's the Sunday. That's, that's the day of the sun. They worship the sun. Well, then what is Saturn Day? Well, that's the Sabbath. Sad, burn, sad. Sunday, Saturn. Boy, it's Saturday. Saturn day. Don't do that. Man, I don't have time for this food, this on. You done saw a video and your whole life changed. Your whole life changed on a two minute video. You know why? Because that video registered with an issue that was already inside of you. You wasn't online doing research. You was online doing an espionage. You was trying to find a way to get out of what you know you in. Can I preach in here? But it says even we have believed in Jesus Christ that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no... Uh -oh. Preach! Thank you, Delvin. <laughs> Delvin, one of the ones I got to keep from going to downtown. <laughs> Brother, quit for your own amusement. <laughs> Sit down <out there. laughs> Take his keys, Tasha. Take his keys. <laughs> Some folk just won't smoke. <laughs> But by the works of the law shall how much no flesh be justified. You're not going to make it during the works of the law. The only way to make it is through Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh to the Father except by him. Romans 6, 15 and 16. Did what? Or what then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? So, why don't they read this one? Here it is. So, brother, I mean, you, I, I mean, you don't, so what you think about one saved, always saved? I think it's not true. What Jesus did was so powerful, it did not override your will. See, the same will you used to choose him is why he left you with a will in the first place. So the power is in your will to accept the power. You can't delete your will from the power. Your will connects you with the power. <laughs> But he tells you right here, man, we don't have to discuss this. Shall we sin? Because we are not under grace, under the law, but under grace. God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourself servants to obey, his servant ye are to whom you obey. Yeah. So if you're unyielded to God and you're yielded to sin, you're obeying sin, you're sin's servant. Yeah. Go all the way back to oh an old one. 
Ann Hutchinson. So basically what Ann Hutchinson did, John Cotton was a Puritan. And in their complex, Puritan complex back in the 1500s, he started teaching because they had started believing in works unto salvation, meaning good works would lead to them being saved. John Cotton came along and said, well, no, it's not the good works, lest any man should boast. It is through Jesus Christ and our personal relationship with him that we are saved. Not by works, even though being saved will produce works. You see what I'm saying? So it's not the works that get you saved. The works come after you're saved. Right? The works are because you're saved. He was teaching that. Man, this girl heard him. It was like, oh, I'm going to run with that. She started having Bible studies in the house and started just going against all of the Puritan theology by teaching this. Let me read it. She claimed that she was a prophetess. They always start there. Receiving direct revelation from God. In this capacity, she prophesied during her trial that God would send judgment upon Massachusetts Bay Colony and would wipe it from existence, which didn't happen. Then she further taught her followers that personal revelation from God was as authoritative in a person's life as the Bible. And that's where she messed up. So she took what John Cotton was teaching and then twisted it to really mean you don't need the Bible if God is speaking directly to you. Because she wanted to tell them that God is speaking stuff to her that they couldn't check in the Bible. So they couldn't fact check. You can't fact check no out of order woman. Because the Bible sits there and tells you. I suffer a woman not to teach or assert authority over a man. That's in the scripture. So any woman ignoring that has created a personal relationship with God that supersedes that. Man, boy, G. Craig is on it today. Y'all can just y'all can look like you. Yeah, you created your own relationship. Yeah, brother T, but you don't understand the words of Paul. Yeah, the words of Paul are the Bible. Those letters are the word. That's how you know you saved, ignorant. You know you saved because of what Paul said. How you gonna discredit what he said about women? No cancel culture in the Bible. You can't cancel prophets in the Bible because of what they said. Because you want to do something different. That's what she did. So she went against them all and they ended up banishing her out of their um, colony. Um, then she also claimed that she could identify the elect among the colonists. Witchcraft. Witchcraft, but she brought that in in the 15th. Y'all, Jezebel is old. Oh, but that's where the, this doctrine that you're hearing now through Carlton Pearson and others, uh, the antinomians, that's what that is. That's where this is where it actually came from. So it's older than all of them. That whole doctrine where you know you just sin at will, whatever you want to do, you can do, whatever you know, and then God is because of his grace, everybody's going to heaven and there is no devil. But a person that is unyielded to God will practice sin as a lifestyle without remorse. Now, when you get to where you can sin without remorse, then you're unyielded to God. But guess who you're yielded to? But they begin to practice sin as a lifestyle without remorse and will even follow preachers that twist the doctrine of Christ to excuse sinful lifestyle practices. So now you got to go find a preacher that's telling you it's okay to live that way. I say it all the time, but folks need to quit all that. Uh, these preachers going to start dropping dead for this foolishness they teach. No, they're not. They're selected by the people. The people want that. The people want to hear that. The people don't want to give up their lifestyle, so they want to get under somebody where it's not necessary. Pastor right. 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 yes, yes, Pearson says, in order to understand that you're free from sin, you got to first understand that you're free to sin. What? Just this away. 
Let me end with this one last thing that will make some of you uncomfortable. You'll never really know that you're free from sin. Do you actually know that you're free to sin and still be loved by God and redeemed by Christ? For where sin abounds, grace abounds all the more. You can't out sin God's grace. The more you sin, the more there's grace. Some of y'all say, well, now you're just giving people license to sin. Y'all sinning without license. You didn't take no class and get ordained to sin. Sin is just an inappropriate response to a legitimate need. Yeah, why you preaching that? But that's antinomian beliefs. Free to sin. They do that. He does it so celebrities will contact him. Movie stars. You know the ones that cuss all in their movies and do nude scenes and all of that. Or gospel artists that like to moonlight and do R&B music and secular music and hang out with the secular folks. Yeah. So they need the antinomian beliefs because it frees them. Still not considering what it's doing to other people. You showed your body in a movie? Do you know what that's going to cost you at judgment? How many people saw that? You made a song that's leading people into sin? Do you know what that's going to cost you? Can I keep preaching in here? 2 Timothy 4 and 3 For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine But after their own lust Shall they what? Heat to themselves They're going to go look for teachers That will teach what they want to hear To excuse their lifestyle practices Antinomian belief suggests That we are free to practice sin Because we will be forgiven but the Bible is clear that a born again person will not choose a lifestyle of sin. Jay Bryan had a song on his bootleg album. What am I saved from? Remember that? Man, I love that song. What are you saved from? Like, what's the point? But the Bible is clear that a born again person will not choose a lifestyle of sin. Romans 6, 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? So the question isn't can you? The question is why would you? If you are dead to sin, why do you still want sin as a lifestyle? Wouldn't you rather God deliver you from that and free you from that so you'll stop hurting yourself and others? This is tough. This is a tough message, ain't it? Yeah. But how are you going to keep doing it if you're supposed to be dead to it? Yeah. I know you're unyielded. Yeah. You haven't yielded. Right. Inclusionists, Gnostics, and once saved, always saved doctrines attempt to vindicate those that have chosen a lifestyle against God's commandments. They seek justification for sin and not from sin. You should be seeking justification from sin. Like, God, I chose you to keep me from falling. I didn't choose you so I would have license to fall. You might as well choose Buddha. Cali. You know the black folk now. Oh, Sean, the one Beyonce worshiped. That's why they're defending her like this. They worship Oshan. Oshan is that womb god. Talk about that in part 13. Yeah. They seek justification for sin and not from sin. Titus 1 and 10 says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, 
especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake, doing it for money, crowds, lights. Man, the worst thing that has ever happened to our world was when everybody was locked down and forced on the internet. People got comfortable. They don't even want to gather anymore. They don't want to be around real people. They'd rather talk to you in front of everybody. Did you hear that? Ain't no private talk anymore. If you try to talk to them privately, they'll screenshot it and post it. They need an audience. You know why they need an audience? Because their conscience bothers them for what they're saying. But the audience gives them approval. Yeah. So you're like, brother, you, you come into the family reunion. Uh uh, the family don't, we, we don't fool with you no more. We don't just on Facebook. But brother, let me inbox you. Hey, hey man, I'm like, what's going on? No, no, talk to me on the page. <laughs> Why we gotta talk on the page? The Hebrews went and marched around this dude's church, this pastor, and, and they came and they said, we, we need to talk to the pastor. They had all their cameras rolling and everything. He said, okay, uh, which one is y'all leader? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I mean, I, I guess I can speak. for the, Okay, well, then you come back to the office, put, turn the cameras off, and you can have a conversation with the pastor. Uh-oh, why you can't talk out here? Why, I mean, what? what, what, what? You need an audience. Yeah, devil started that. Yeah. What happened to private talk? What happened to reasoning with one another? What happened to that? That's gone. I need a group. I need people. There are folks saying what they shouldn't say for fame. A true born again experience will always bring the Holy Ghost into a person's life to teach them God's desires for their lifestyle practices. Amen. See, when folks start trying to beat the system, the salvation system, and trying to outsmart God and cannot sin and, and, and you know, live this sinful lifestyle and still, you know, once saved, always have A person doing that, they haven't had a true born-again experience. You haven't experienced God and put him in his rightful place. If he's in his rightful place, you spend every day trying to yield to him. You spend your life trying to yield. Not trying to yield to the enemy. A true born again experience you'll always bring the, that'll bring the Holy Ghost in your life and the Holy Ghost will begin to guide you and speak to you then conviction will come when you're not living right Amen. Holy Ghost give you that nudge no, no don't do that now you can't keep doing that will the Holy Ghost do that yeah Holy Ghost nudge you no you need, you need to quit doing that don't do it don't do it don't do it and after a little while, somebody will come to you and say, hey, bro, man, Lord, come talk to you. Man. You need to quit doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So then you just, oh, man, hey, he ain't my friend. Then you go get some raggedy friends that the Lord can't talk to because they raggedy. Yeah. I mean, your life just goes down. Yeah. Then conviction will come when you are not living right. A person that ignores conviction will fall into sin and shame. Yes. Amen? Yeah. If you ignore conviction. 1 John 2 and 27. But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth where? So when you say for real, born again experience, the anointing comes and lives in you. And ye need not that any man teach you. Don't nobody even have to tell you not to do that anymore because the Holy Ghost is in you telling you don't do that anymore. Oh, you know when you first got saved, you had that goody two-shoes spirit on you. 
I mean, you step on an ant. Oh, whoa, watch out now. That's a life. Bless you. God made that. God made him. I'm going to name him. Remember that? When you first got saved because the Holy Ghost just kept speaking to you. You didn't want to do nobody wrong. How you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, did I say that too loud? I'm doing pretty good. Oh, man, because, you know, I'm saved. So I can't be talking loud and stuff, you know, like I used to. Then you became a vigilante, knocking the dominoes off your cousin's tables. Get these devil eyes off this table. Give me them cards. Brother, it's Uno. I don't care. Yeah. Couldn't play no game. You was no fun. What movie y'all watching? Oh, that's rated PG. I can't watch that. All G for God. It's all G for God. For God. That's what G stands for. Godly. Is it rated godly? I, I can't watch it. Amen. Because the Lord will speak to you at the end over time. Your voice got louder than God's voice inside. Because you fed your flesh. Once you start feeding your flesh, your flesh gets stronger. And you can't hear the voice that abides in you. But sometimes that voice will speak up louder just to save you. Yeah. Don't do that. Hey. And that anointing in you. It abides in you. No man has to teach you when the spirit is in you and speaking to you. But as the same anointing teaches you all things and is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. What it's telling you to do is telling you so you can abide in it. Because when you ignore him, you leave him. And you're no longer abiding in him. And you're vulnerable to sin. Yeah, our goal in here is to live right. Yeah. That's the goal. We go through ups and downs, valleys and mountains and all of that. We gonna, you're going to go through that because your life probably was hell growing up. Some of them issues and different things, but it's nothing that the Holy Ghost can't handle. And you got to pay attention to the voice that's speaking inside of you. Because once you start ignoring conviction, you'll lose conviction. Yeah. You should feel terrible every time you mess up. Summary. Yeah, this is a deep message. I know, man. It's the truth, though. Look at somebody say it's the truth. It's the truth, and you know it is. Look at somebody say, live right. Live right. Live right. Don't just live right in here, live right in secret. Yielding to God will keep you from yielding to sin. Amen. Let me say that again. Yielding to God will keep you from yielding to sin. If you truly love the Lord and desire to please him, you will yield to him. Right. Struggling to overcome sins of the flesh is really a struggle to yield to God's desire for you. That's your struggle. Yielding. Yielding. What causes us to struggle? would yield it. This comes from earthly struggles that we have experienced. So your life experiences makes it harder for you to yield. Moses is a good example of this. Moses was orphaned by his parents. So Mo Moses had abandonment issues. So when it came time for him to institute the laws that God was speaking to him, a lot of times he would side with the people because of his abandonment. He didn't want to do nobody wrong because he was done wrong. And he knows what it feels like. 
You see what I'm saying? So his life, earthly struggles affected his ability to yield some, some of the time. God told him, strike the rock. Uh, don't strike the rock again. Don't get water that way. He did it. And he didn't get to see the promised land. Moses? Yes. Great Moses. But he couldn't yield in that area because he had some issues. Oh, that's too deep for somebody. But that's the truth. Amen. I go down the list of They all had issues. Because they were all human. So sometimes your earthly Struggles cause issues for you and make it hard for you to yield. This is why the devil causes trauma and hurt from loved ones early in our life. Because the devil's trying to put an issue in you so when you get older, it will be hard for you to yield. Took your father out your home. Made you strive all your life. You're a female, striving all your life to be a boss. Husband come along, he like you, he want to be with you, but he don't want you to be his boss. But you can't turn boss off. You can't turn it off. You can't turn it off. You can't yield. Yeah, because yielding to him is yielding to God. Uh-oh. Yeah, you can't yield to your own husband. How you going to yield to God? You can't skip over that and yield to God and not yield to him. Early struggle, early in life. Man, I'm preaching it here. Don't y'all make me feel a way. Boy, that last comment just sucked the air out the room. Women in here. This is why the devil causes trauma and hurt from loved ones early in our life. When you are unyielding to earthly authorities and leaders, you will be unyielding to God. God is represented in the earth by earthly authorities and leaders. To even yield your human spirit, you must temper your emotions. Emotional pain and anguish causes us to have a bad spirit. And this disposition makes it hard to truly yield to and trust God. Some folks can't yield and trust God. They have a bad spirit. Yeah. David had a bad spirit once upon a time come up on him and he had to pray. Renew in me a right spirit. Get this bad spirit off me because it's going to destroy everything. But emotional pain will do that. It'll mess your spirit up. Our human spirit becomes postured to defend itself, protect itself, and prove itself. So when your upbringing was bad, dysfunctional, whatever, now you're in defense mode all the time. Protect mode all the time. And prove yourself all the time. The three things that you don't have to have if you're in Christ. You don't have to have any of them. God defends you. He protects you. And he proves you. That's why these folks want this old crazy doctrine. Because the doctrine will work with their plan to defend, protect, and prove themselves. Show everybody how high I can get. These emotions prevent us from yielding because we are in control of them and cannot relinquish that control to God. Bad leadership in our upbringing causes us to not trust leaders. So we take the reins of our spirit and try to steer our lives ourselves. God did not create us to function this way. This is why immorality is running rampant and so many people hate their lives because they cannot yield to God and truly give up themselves. They will struggle with sin and hate. Yeah, when you can't give yourself up, yourself becomes God. And you're going to struggle with sin. And then you're going to hate those that are doing what you should have done. In order to truly overcome this world, you must yield to God. In order to have victory over sin struggles, you must yield to God. In order to receive all that God has for you, you must what? 
yield to him. I feel like I preached. Yeah. Romans 6 and 17. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered from you. So you used to be a servant of a sin. Maybe you was a servant of sin to about 10 o'clock today. It's 12 now. You've obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was just delivered to you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your member servants to uncleanness and to iniquity under iniquity, sin under sin, even so now yield your member servants to righteousness unto holiness. He's telling you how to live. Why are you trying to find a back door into the alley? He's telling you how to live. For when you were servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things? He's saying, remember what sin was doing to you? Remember what sin was doing to your life before you gave your life to the Lord? Remember, why would you bring that back? That's okay. That lonely hand clap. That cash clap. Man. So what fruit ye have then in those things where ye were now ashamed? You're ashamed of all of that. For the end of those things is death. Yeah. But now being made free from sin and, be, and become servants to God, ye have your fruit unto holiness. And the end is everlasting life. Yeah. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord everyone stand to your feet another thing living in sin and you know you live in sin and you always creeping and stuff you always wondering who looking and who know you know Whiskey on your breath and you put some mints in, you wondering if they, if they can smell it or if the Mentos is strong enough. You can't test it. This don't test it. That don't test it. So you go talk to somebody and see how they react with it. I had to take some NyQuil last night, some DayQuil this morning, and some Rubitessin at lunch. Brother, you're drinking again. Man, let me help you. Take that before the Lord. The Lord showed me something the other day, and I'm gonna, we're going to open the altar up for you to come and get prayer. Matter of fact, just come. If you, if you need prayer because of this message, and, and, and you having trouble yielding, you want to truly yield your members to God, come on up. Just come up. Come up. Come up. Just, I just need all of my members. Everything but my toe is yielded. I need the toe. I need everything. Everything just complete yielded. But God was showing me something about the passage that says we can come boldly before his throne. Unashamed. And what he's talking about, he's not talking about coming arrogantly like we're something. A lot of churches taught that. That's not it. He's saying no matter how bad you've been, you can still come. That's what boldly means, meaning you can boldly come knowing he'll forgive you. Amen. Now you ain't going to come boldly like, hey Lord, give me that a grace. No, you come ashamed. But the boldness is you're coming with confidence that he will fix it. No matter what it is, confidence. You're confident that you came to the right place. Yeah. So we're going to yield to God. Every part of us, our members, our minds, our bodies, whatever it is. And we're going to cancel all issues, childhood issues, childhood trauma, past trauma, whatever happened to us in the past. We're going to cancel all of that. And we're going to trust and believe that we can truly yield to God. <clears throat> so everyone bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this message, Lord. We thank you for the truth of your word. And Father, Father, as many of us struggle, many of us have had 
seasons of struggle. Many of us, sometimes it's the same season each year. Something happens, something starts happening, a feeling happens, a phone call happens, a text message, an inbox, just whatever it is. And the enemy knows that that is a trigger. That's going to push a button. That's just going to start a process that we are tired of going through. Whatever it is, Father God, just being set off by certain voices, set off by certain phrases, set off by certain opinions, Father God. Whatever it is, being reminded of the past, things that have happened, whatever it is, whatever door is open, Father, we close that door right now. We ask that you show us that door and we close that door with your power right now, Father God. Close that door that leads to sin, that keeps us from completely yielding. Help us to yield to you, Lord. Help us to hear you. Help us to hear your conviction. Help us to obey your Holy Ghost when it leads us and guides us into truth. Father God, help us, Lord. And whatever we need to give up, whatever we need to get rid of, whatever we need to change, show it to us. You said no man would even have to teach us, but you'll convict us by the power of the Holy Ghost so that we will go and get rid of it. We'll stop going there. We'll stop talking to them. Father God, we'll put that out of our lives. Help us, Lord God, to yield completely. Everyone lift your hands up. And Father God, whatever issue that the enemy placed in our lives, whatever age it was, whoever said it, did it, whoever's guilty, whatever, Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we put it out right now. Father God, we put that issue out of our lives. Let it be rectified, Father God. Answer that and remove it. Take it away from us, God. Whatever it is, no matter how far back it's been, we're tired of those thoughts. We're tired of those voices. We're tired of obeying that. We're tired of feeling that way. Father God, help us, Lord. Help us overcome and set us free. And whom the Son sets free is free in in the name that is above every name we believe we pray and we will be yielded vessels unto you unto righteousness in jesus name amen hallelujah 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 hug somebody say i'm gonna yield i'm gonna yield I'm going to yield to God and not to sin. Hallelujah. Help me yield, Lord. Help me yield. Help me yield. I'm not going to dumb down the gospel. I'm not going to dumb down God's expectations. I'm not going to dumb down the Bible. I'm not going to dumb my life down to accept the foolish antinomian doctrine some heresy from a witch and a cauldron I'm not changing what the word said but the word of God is right I'm the one that's been wrong the word of God is right hallelujah hallelujah look at somebody say the word of God is right the word of God is right no matter how wrong you were the word of God is right Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah.